So today we're looking at a game that's actually surprisingly decent for a movie license tie-in and that sort of thing, but then again, considering the franchise it's based on, it shouldn't be much of a surprise. It's Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith for the original Xbox, also available for PlayStation 2, PC, and there are even handheld iterations for the Game Boy Advance and Nintendo DS, although those are totally different games. A somewhat loose adaptation of the third and final film in the polarizing Star Wars prequel trilogy, Star Wars Revenge of the Sith video game It was released a short time prior to the movie it was based on, which meant you got a healthy dose of spoilers at the time, since it not only revealed major plot elements to a point, but also featured actual movie clips from the film itself, which, in the minds of some, was the only real reason to buy this game, or rather, not buy the game since it spoiled the movie to those who bought this before the film's release date. Nowadays, it's sort of a moot point since both are almost a decade old by this point. And yet, as I sit here and record the audio for this review, a little over a decade after both this film and this game was released, in a few days we'll be getting a new Star Wars movie. Which is actually a surreal feeling that we'd be getting another one, let alone annual installments over the next few years. Which is... I'm still trying to wrap my head around that. That's kind of... wow. Uh, as far as the story goes, the game does a fairly good job of following the plot of the movie, although the overall narrative itself focuses mostly on the ongoing conflict in the Clone Wars and the beginning of the Great Jedi Purge than any of the so-called emotional sequences that have no place in bearing in a game like this. So there's none of that poorly written romantic garbage or the bullshit family soap opera revolving around sand and midichlorians or tax agents or whatever kind of shit you could come up with. It's just the good stuff where you kill everything and everybody dies. Unfortunately for the equally bloodthirsty and deranged, there is no level where you can kill Jar Jar Binks. Which is unfortunate and this is not based on 15, 16, 20 years of seething hatred or anything like that. Look, I just rewatched the movies recently. Jar Jar is precisely as horrible as I remember him. He deserves a good mercy killing. And anyone who wants to suggest that he's a secret Sith Lord who's in the shadows or some kind of bullshit like that, you people all deserve to die. Slowly. Painfully. Swiftly. Wait, that's not... Wait. Excuse me a moment. I'll be back. And with a slightly higher pitched voice. Good old inspection mission. Nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. Maybe I should probably slow. What fuck is this? A Jar Jar, Jar, Jar cult? Is that those fools on Reddit? You know, fan theories. Fuck you. You killed off the Chelf. Now, those fools are ready to whack off to some other stupid theory. You're damn right. Going home, fuck. Got a review to finish. Pointless sketch over. Yeah. So, Revenge of the Sith is a rather typical hack and slash beat em up with lightsabers and force powers and taking down hordes of worthless disposable robots. Although you'll actually get to fight several Jedi and clone troopers later on, including the more pivotal battles of the film and then some. Through combat, you'll gain experience points which you can use to build up your stats and acquire new moves and powers to help you out. The game is broken up into 17 chapters and each chapter will have you playing as either Obi-Wan Kenobi or Anakin Skywalker. Each start off with basic similar skills but obviously will become more distinct as the game progresses. For example, with his eventual descent to the dark side of the Force, Anakin will gain the ability to shoot Force Lightning. An ability that he never used in the actual movie, but hey, I'm not complaining. It's a nice little thing to have, methinks. For the most part, Sith is a fairly straightforward linear affair. You're basically going from point A to point B, hacking away at droids or anything else that impedes your progress. Occasionally you'll come across some obstacle that you'll need to overcome, whether it be burning through doors with your lightsabers or disabling generators or similar bits. You'll come across bosses you'll have to defeat to clear the chapter. Levels are fairly linear, there's little to no exploration in this game nor are there split paths. The closest you got here is destroying certain bits of environment to uncover force gems that will either extend your life meter or your force power, but nothing that significantly diverges from the main path. Sith makes full use of the Xbox controller and every button has a different function pivotal to success. 
Three face buttons are dedicated to varying levels of basic attacks that you could chain into combos and stuff. You have a jump button, a block button, a button to use the force, a button to toss the saber, and another button to for specific force abilities, whether it be force push or force lightning, that sort of thing. And of course there's various button combinations for slightly more advanced abilities. Move the right stick while blocking and you'll deflect attacks. Push and hold both analog sticks and you'll heal yourself. Useful for moments where health pickups are at a premium. And then there's various combination attacks that you can earn and learn to be a more effective Jedi or Sith. All of this may seem a bit daunting at first, and indeed there is a bit of a learning curve when it comes to figuring out how to access certain abilities, but the game does help out somewhat by oftentimes dropping little hints on how to perform certain bits. Most gamers would frown on this kind of handholding, but I found them to be helpful reminders to how to pull off certain abilities that might be needed for certain situations, especially after not having played this game in literally years. And once you get the hang of it, it actually controls quite nicely. Although the jumping does feel somewhat floaty and sometimes there's a bit of a delay when I want to jump out of sticky situations, but other than that, controls work well enough. What you see is what you get with Revenge of the Sith, fast and furious lightsaber swinging action with occasional bits of force usage. It's a straight up hack and slash action adventure game and doesn't really do much to go above and beyond that descriptor. You're not going to be flying any starfighters or riding any speeder bikes or pod racers or anything of the sort. Instead, Sith focuses solely on making the action the most enjoyable and noteworthy aspect of the game, and it does this rather well. Mowing down droids is satisfying, slaying Jedi children is a thrill, and then there's the battles with the various Jedi and Sith in the game, whether it be against General Grievous, or Mace Windu, or Skywalker, or Kenobi. Sure, the constant bouts of combat does eventually wear itself thin, but it never gets too boring, and at the very least, you'll sometimes be given other things to do, like pushing buttons and cutting doors. But let's talk about the Jedi fights, which I think are probably the highlight of the game. One-on-one -on -one battles divided into segments which take the fight to different locations, making them a bit more varied than the boss battles with giant droid machines, as well as the one-on-one -on -one versus battles which are constrained to a single room. And the Jedi themselves are fairly challenging opponents with varying abilities for you to overcome. So now Mace Windu can finally get that honorable last fight with Anakin, rather than the abysmal fate he met in the movie, where he loses a hand, gets shocked off a building, and presumably loses an eye on the way down, or something like that. If there was any real issue I had with the game, it would be the camera, which has a tendency to be really finicky at time, and often chooses the absolute worst angles from a gameplay standpoint, often obscuring your viewpoint because of a choice angle or something that doesn't give you a good look at what's ahead. It's nothing that cannot be accustomed to, and more often than not, the camera isn't that much of a detriment, but I really wish I could control the camera angle just to get a better view at what I'm up against at certain points. Oh well. As you progress through the game, you'll start to unlock various bits of content. For the most part, this comprises conceptual artwork, stills, and various video cutscenes, but later on you'll start to unlock playable characters for the game's versus mode. Essentially a one-on-one -on -one fighting affair, two out of three falls, that sort of thing. And you'll also unlock bonus missions, which are essentially quick side missions, placing you in control of other characters like Yoda or the Grievous bodyguards, and have no real overall bearing on the game itself. As such, they're a nice diversion, but serve no real purpose other than to give you a little more extra meat to play with. However, of particular interest in this regard, completing all the main missions in the main campaign will unlock the final bonus mission, essentially a recreation of the Death Star duel between Darth Vader and old Ben Kenobi in the original Star Wars movie. You know, the real first movie, long before they added an episode 4 onto the label. It's not a long level, and the game does take certain liberties by making both Vader and Ben Kenobi much better fighters than originally depicted in 1977. Oh, and Vader can now shoot Force Lightning for some reason, but it's a nice little easter egg that's worth slothing through the main game. Or you could use a cheat code and unlock everything from the get-go, just saying. For a mid-2005 Xbox release, Sith looks pretty good all things considered. The set pieces are rather nicely done and match up the film's various locales, and some of these levels look really nice such as the various Mustafar stages and its appropriately glowing lava. The various character models are neatly rendered with some minor details to them and move about rather smoothly. Lightsabers have a nice glow to them and the resulting lightsaber fights are pretty slick that feel natural and not too stiff, 
The visual effects, explosions, and stuff are rather nice looking. Clipping is at a minimum. Camera angles are fairly decent with some sour moments that I just mentioned, but on a whole, not a huge detriment to the overall experience. Cutscenes comprise either in-game sequences or clips from the movie. The in-game sequences look good enough and the movie clips are clean looking. A particular note are a couple of clips that were cut from the final film, but inserted into the game. Not a bad little bonus. And then there are the voiceovers. Yeah, look, I'm not really going to touch on the music because it's a Star Wars game and all these Star Wars games during the 2000s just lifted the John Williams score for the most part and plastered it all over the place, and Sith is no exception. Although I was rather disappointed that none of the game's soundtrack originated from the Episode 3 score, which had some rather good pieces here. Some might call this a blessing, but I honestly believe this game feels a bit empty in swiping the scores of the previous five films, especially when past games that directly adapted the film had music from said film, and this included Episode 1 The Phantom Menace for PlayStation. Sound effects are also your usual cookie cutter collection of Star Wars sounds with all the lightsaber sounds and blaster sounds and explosion sounds and stuff, so that part of it needs no dwelling into. It's stuff you expect from games set in this universe and it's all relatively well done and crisp and clear and whatever. So the in-game voiceovers were done by the folks who worked on the Clone War animated series, which is either a blessing in disguise or salt rubbed into the wound depending on who you ask. I thought it was okay for the most part, none of the dialogue really blew me away and the voice acting in some instances felt a bit phoned in and stilted, but for the most part it was pretty harmless, moves the story along and gets the job done only notable thing that really goes without saying is that there's no real sense of consistency between the voiceovers and the included movie footage. And even the most casual listener will notice the difference between Hayden Christensen's movie Anakin and Matt Lanter's CG Anakin. The two Obi-Wan's sound a little more consistent. There might be a couple voices that sound exactly the same, but I don't know. I'm digging too deep into this. Overall, the voiceovers, you'll notice the difference between the two voices, but Whatever, it, it serves its purpose, and that's all you, re you could really ask for. No doubt there'll be some folks who will frown on this game probably because it's based on the prequel, or maybe it's because of the somewhat repetitive gameplay, but for my money, Revenge of the Sith is actually a pretty good game. There are certainly worse ways to go when it comes to Star Wars video games, and this really isn't it. While it's far from the ultimate Jedi experience that the box makes it out to be, it's still a fairly enjoyable game that offers its fair share of action, and does really go beyond that, but really doesn't need to. Sure, it's going to take you a while to get a full grip on the controls, because there's a lot of buttons and a lot of stuff you could do, but once to get the hang of it, it can actually be pretty fun to play. Most probably, the versus mode is what's going to occupy the game's time more than anything, as once you complete the single player mode, there's not much else to do once you unlock everything and clear all the side missions and all that. Still, if you're into Star Wars and you don't mind good, wholesome, mindless fun, then Revenge of the Sith should satisfy quite nicely.